Welcome to TipEx. In this training video we will show you how to review and interpret the analysis results, how to optimize your model manually and with the optimization tools of the software, and how to export printed reports. After we create the model in the model area with all the staging and we define the different analysis parameters, we are ready to analyze our model. I press this button in order to analyze the selected design section. As soon as the analysis is completed, this analysis and checking summary table appears. Here we can review the most critical values for all these items among all stages. And here we can review the most critical values per stage. Here we can review the maximum estimated wall displacement, settlement, the maximum applied moment on the wall, the absolute and per feet of the wall, the maximum wall shear, and most importantly we can see the structural ratios for the moment and for the shear. This is the maximum moment divided by the moment capacity of the wall, and this is the maximum shear divided by the shear capacity of the wall. By interpreting these results, we can decide uh, if we need to do any modification in our wall section. These values have to be below 1 for us to be safe, and the closer we are to the value 1, the more efficient is our solution. At the same time, we need to review this property, the wall displacement, and perhaps if the displacements are governing in our design, we need to optimize the model based on the displacements. In this example, it happened that both these values are close to 1, so uh, structurally we wouldn't need to do some modification. It's fine, as I see it. On the other hand, uh, this 2-inch displacement perhaps is too much. We need to do something to reduce our displacements. This can happen uh, if we uh, decrease the distance between the piles, if we use bigger pile sections, uh, if we increase the, the reinforcement, uh, or even uh, if we review the support spacing and perhaps by moving the supports a little locations a little bit to the top, we can achieve smaller displacements. We have to see where in which construction stage actually uh, this big displacement appears and we can decide what to do accordingly. If we move to the right on this table, we can also see the support results, the sub maximum support reaction, the critical support check, which is either the structural or the geotechnical. In this case, we can see this is the structural. This means that the support fails structurally. We need to do something uh, to increase the structural capacity of this support. Uh, we need first to locate which support has the issue, perhaps both of them. Uh, this is something that we can review on the model area uh, and we will see it in a few seconds and after this we will decide what to do uh, if we need to increase the structural section manually or we can ask the software optimization tools to do it for us. Here we see the geotechnical pullout capacity and here we see the wall embedment safety factors. Now, according to our design and how we design and if we have assigned or not um, a geotechnical code, we have to review these values and all of them has to be above a limit. Uh, this could be 1, 1 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, depending how we design. This 3 uh, is too big, perhaps there is some, this means that there is some space for us to use a shorter wall in this model. If we could double click on the wall uh, reduce uh, a couple of feet from the total wall depth, run the analysis again and in some seconds we could have the new results. Or again there is an optimization tool that can help us optimize this uh, uh, in order to achieve a required wall embedment safety factor as I will show you. So I will close this table and on the screen, on the model area, we can see different results in graphs in all stages. So I can move stage by stage and here we can see the wall moment with a moment capacity. We can see the wall shear with the shear capacity in red. So we can uh, verify that uh, 
in every stage uh, the shear and the moment do not exceed the limits, the calculated limits. We can see um, uh, the wall displacement, the estimated wall displacement, and we can see that the problem appears to be in the cantilever stage. Now, there are some things we could do uh, to fix this. One thing is that we could try to move the support a little bit to the top. This means that we could make a smaller excavation in stage 1. So, we would have definitely smaller wall displacements. Another thing we could do is that we could try to increase uh, the wall section in order to achieve less, uh, to have less displacements. Uh, a last thing that we could do is that we could go to the analysis tab and instead of Bloom's method or we could use Caltrans or even with Bloom's method we could use the additional options from Caltrans manual approach. And here there is uh, an option in Caltrans uh, an approximation method for the displacement that puts a virtual point of fixity in, uh, in a specific uh, fixity of bedment that we can define. Uh, the default value is 25%. So if I assign this and if I run again the analysis, I will see fast the new results, I will see the new displacements which will be reduced uh, in the cantilever stage and this is an acceptable method that you could use in order to achieve less displacements. You see already the displacement went to 0 0.8 from uh, uh, 1.9 that it was before. So if I close it I can see now this in the cantilever stage this point of fixity that uh, reduces my wall displacements in the cantilever stage. Again uh, this is a method that is accepted by many DOTs uh, if you wish to use it, uh, this would be beneficial for your well displacements in the cantilever stage. In the other stages, I don't see differences from before. Here also we could see uh, the support reactions in every stage, uh, in KLF. We could see uh, the structural capacities and the geotechnical capacities for each tieback. So if we review these values here, we can locate the most critical phase where uh, and which support fails. So as we can see here, the first support row fails structurally in stage 5. This is where this STR 1.2 appears. So we need to do something to increase the structural capacity of this uh, support. We could also see here um, the soil pressures. So if I go to different stages I will see my active pressures in different stages and in the last stage I see the FHWA apparent pressures um, as we ask the software to uh, do. We could see the water pressures. In general we can see different results graphically and in tables uh, in every stage that can help us uh, decide what to do and uh, what steps we should make to optimize our project. This gives us uh, many options so uh, we can decide uh, if we need indeed to increase the structural sections or if we, need to, uh, if we can find a more economical solution like uh, trying to optimize the support locations uh, etc. I already told you how to interpret the results in the tables and in the graphs, so I could do it manually, I could double click uh, on the tieback, then in the dialog that appears I could access here and increase the structural section of it, perhaps uh, instead of the structural section I could increase uh, the strand diameter, I could do something uh, that would increase the structural capacity uh, for this tieback row. Or we could go to the optimization tab and here we have several optimization options that work after the model is analyzed like in our case here. So among them I can see this auto design support structurally. I could select this tool, click on the tieback and then here the software proposes that the five strands that I was using changed to this uh, seven uh, strand optimized bar. I say OK. Now if I access this, this is the optimized 7 strands option. This is no longer 
the five strands that I was using. So if I run again the analysis, I will see that this optimized section probably works. We will verify it in a few seconds. So you see now this box turned white. When it was red, it means that at least one property had an issue here. Now it turned white, it seems everything is fine and if I go to the right I see that uh, structurally uh, the supports are both fine. This is the maximum uh, structural support ratio among both supports among all stages. So I see that everything is below 1. This means that I, I'm, uh, we are pretty safe. And if I close it I can verify it also from here. I go to the last stage and I can see that the structural from 1.2 went to 0 0.87. Uh, there are other optimization tools we could use. We could auto design a wall. We could auto design the fixed length of a ground anchor if the geotechnical pull out capacity uh, factor failed. Uh, I could go here and I could increase this either manually or use this tool, select the tie back, and it would increase uh, the embedment, the bonded part length of the tie back in order uh, to improve this factor. Uh, another thing that I can do about the wall embedment itself. I could go to the results, press here to see the wall embedment safety factors and here I can see the different wall embedment safety factors for every stage. So I try to locate the most critical stage, it seems to be the cantilever for us now and I can see that the minimum is this 3, uh, the embedment safety factor 3 in stage 1. Among all stages this is the most critical. We could optimize this manually, we could double click on the wall change the wall depth to something else, perhaps try 45 feet, 47 feet and press OK, run the analysis again and review the new factor in a couple of seconds or we could go to the design tab where this option optimize wall embedment for safety factors is available uh, and if we click on this we can set a specific required safety factor, run the analysis and the software can try to optimize the wall depth to achieve the safety factor that we asked for. This option is available only when we do limit equilibrium analysis from the analysis tab. If we had selected non-linear analysis or the combination method, this option in the design tab would not be available. As soon as we finish with the software model optimization, we are ready to export our printed reports. We can go to the report tab and here in the beginning we can see this report manager. I can press this button, the report manager appears and here we can select which design sections and which stages of that design sections we need to include in the report. Perhaps we need to report only one, only the last stage, all the stages uh, it's up to us to decide which design sections and which stages we wish to include in the report. In the middle section we see the different available report sections. Here we have lists with several uh, results that we can choose to include in our report format which is here on the right. So if we need to add any of these here on the right, we simply have to access here, access an item, drag and drop it here. So we can see this way that we can add several um, sections in our report format. We could also access here uh, the different items, drag and drop and change the order of the chapters in our report. Here we can also select the sketch layout. Uh, the sketches can be presented in uh, the reports as vertical or landscape in order to choose how the result graphs would appear uh, on the paper. Finally, there is the option to not use borders for sketches. The borders include uh, the sketch, the image, name, uh, name of the project, etc. If we don't wish to include it, we can select this option here. Uh, there are three options here in order that we can preview the report export it in PDF and export it in Word format. I pressed now this button in order to preview the report so uh, in a couple of seconds we can see how uh, the report will look like. So here we can see the report. We can put our own logo, company name, etc. name of the project, 
these things we can set up in the beginning in the project and then we can see uh, tables with uh, project assumptions uh, different results uh, and we can see graphs uh, envelope of bending moments for all stages uh, shares, word displacements and so on so we can have all the sections here checked and we can later on save this file uh, into PDF or we can use this option to export the PDF or export it in Word format uh, there is another option here uh, equations and detailed calculations if I drag and drop this item here uh, it could generate uh, depending on how many stages and how many structural sections we have uh, several hundred of pages with equations but if you wish to report these equations to anybody or if you wish to review them uh, the structural equations you can totally do it you can drag and drop this item here and the calculation procedure will be included in the report visit our websites in order to review additional information or software programs useful theory documents examples and training videos if you wish to receive our pricing, special offers, or if you wish to arrange a free online presentation, feel free to contact us. Thank you for watching this video.